you've almost certainly been driving and come across a sign like this, welcoming you to the city that you're heading towards, before you quickly realise it's still a long way to go. In fact, sometimes you'll see another sign telling you how far it is to the city that you've just been welcomed to. So where are all these signs pointing? What is the definition of the centre of a city? Let's go on a journey where we find out exactly what is the centre of a city, the centre of Australia, the world and the universe. You might have heard the phrase, all roads lead to Rome. In ancient times, there was a lot of truth to that. You see, all towns and cities would measure with what's known as malarium. These were markers that would measure 1,000 steps. Now, where they were measuring to exactly in Rome is known as the malarium aureum. This was located in the heart of the city, outside the Temple of Saturn. Just like in ancient Rome, engineers and surveyors need a point to measure to. This is known as the zero point or kilometre zero. And here in Melbourne, that's right here. There are different zero points in different cities. In Sydney, for example, if you head across to Macquarie Park, you'll find the obelisk of distances. And this one is old. It dates back to the early 1800s. If you go to Perth, you'll find their zero point is located at the corner of the old Treasury building. You'll find different zero points in cities all around the world. They could be physically marked, like outside of Copenhagen City Hall. You might find it to be the entrance of Notre Dame in Paris and the Azari Tower in Iran. So what happened with this building? How is a clothing store the central point of Melbourne? Well, it all goes back to the history. Generally, when you're picking a zero point, you'll find something central in the middle of the city and often it will be an iconic place. In this case, this building was the GPO, the General Post Office. And that was the case for decades and decades till eventually the post office moved. This building was then used for commercial and retail, and in this case, a clothing store. So this was the location for a lot of years after that. With the change in use of this building, the Office of the Surveyor General in Victoria thought there should be a standalone point. And what that meant is it led to the installation of this. This is a survey mark. It is now the official zero point, as you can see, just a couple of metres from the old building. So it's not like we needed to change any signs or distances. What that means is this is now the official zero point of Melbourne. Unlike a city where you can kind of choose where your centre point is, it's very different for a country like Australia. And firstly, apologies for Tasmania for being let off this. Now, you might wonder why that is. You might think it's a pretty obvious thing. But in fact, people have been wanting to discover and travel to the centre of Australia for a long time. In fact, it dates back to the 1840s when explorer Charles Sturt made failed attempts to be there. He's the person the Sturt Desert P is named after. So you might be wondering, why is it so difficult? Well, in fact, there is no official centre point of Australia. Australia. Now you might be looking at this map and going, surely it's somewhere around here. And you would be right, but specifically it gets a lot more tricky. Finding the middle point of Australia is no easy task. And the reason for that is there's multiple different approaches that you can do. It becomes a mathematical problem, which is challenging to find the center of an irregular shape. The first approach is called the geodetic mean. And what you do here is you find the northernmost point, the southernmost point, east and west, and you draw a box around all of that. And if you find the midpoint of that rectangle, then that's where you'll find a center point. The next approach is to try to find the point of land the furthest away from the coastline. Now this is called the pole of inaccessibility. And the way you do this is you try to find the largest circle that fits inside Australia, and it essentially touches three different points of ocean. Another approach is the center of gravity approach. And what you can do there is cut out a shape, the exact shape of Australia, and find the point where it balances balances either on your finger or a point of string. Now mathematically what they would do there is actually take a data point along the entire coastline and find the average and that's where the center point is. Even though each of these are different calculations, in the case of Australia they're all pretty close to each other. In fact they're all within a couple of hundred kilometers from Alice Springs. Now that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. So what it means is that despite Australia having quite a jagged and irregular coastline, there's some degrees of symmetry which makes all of these mathematical approaches pretty similar and pretty close to each other. Now there's three different points right there, but there actually are more. In fact, the Australian government, as we said, doesn't recognize that there's an official point and on their own website says there are five different points. Now the extra ones have to do with historical reasons. They are physical locations where people have made these monuments and shrine to the center point of Australia. <music> One of the most popular running apps in the world has a feature called Global Heat Map. 
And the way it works is you can see all of the most popular places that people run, including right here at the Tan in Melbourne. Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, the locations that light up the most are those that use the app the most. So Australia, the US, the UK, and parts of Japan. But something strange is going on 500 kilometers off the coast of Ghana in the Atlantic Ocean. This is Null Island, and to be clear, there is no land here. No one is getting their steps or doing their run this far into the ocean. So what's going on? And what can happen is that if data is corrupted or it's not recorded at all, a computer system might default it to zero, zero. And I think the location is really interesting, 500 kilometers off the coast of Africa. This is located at point zero, zero, zero degrees longitude, zero degrees latitude. And what that means is it aligns with the prime meridian, that is Greenwich, famous for Greenwich Mean Time and the equator which runs across right there. So this place is not north, it's not south, it's not east, it's not west. So you might wonder is this the middle of the world? Well not really. As you can see on this map Australia is located in the middle where often you might find it in one corner. That's because where we position the map is entirely arbitrary. There is no centre of the world. Now running isn't the only place that you'll find things at Null Island. You might find them in databases to do with shopping or hotels or a range of different things. But if you go there, you might be disappointed if you want all of these facilities because it turns out there's nothing there. In fact, at most you'll find is just one weather boy. All right, what about the center of the universe? Now the universe is staggeringly, incomprehensibly huge. So the chance that the center of it is anywhere near Earth is pretty low, or is it? Well, here's something which is counterintuitive, but true. There is no center of the universe. The universe is expanding in every direction from every point. So there is no actual center and there is no edge. Now, this is a little bit confusing, but here's a way you might want to think about it. If you had a globe of the Earth, you might say that the center is right in the Earth's core. But if we looked at a map, a more two-dimensional view, then in essence you can just continue to scroll around and roll around the planet and you never find an edge. And in this case, what is the centre? Maybe it's Null Island, maybe it's one of the poles, but no point has any more or less say than the others of being the centre of the Earth. And the same is true of the universe. Because there's no exact centre point, a few enterprising individuals, a lot in America, have decided to claim that their backyard is indeed the centre of the universe. So a few scientists gathered around, maybe having a few beers, and decided that the trendy neighbourhood of Fremont in Seattle would be the centre of the universe. So they've put out this pole, which has now been there for decades, a colourful symbol sitting in the middle of a traffic intersection claiming that this is indeed the centre of the universe. But it's not the only one. There's an office in NASA in California, there's a manhole cover in Idaho and a market square in Finland all making the same claim. Now if you don't agree with any of these, here's the cool thing. You can decide for yourself that your home, your area, your backyard is the centre of the universe. From knowing how far you have to drive in your road trip to understanding your place in the universe. People just like being in the centre of something.